Welcome to the Hearst Trading Room. My name is David Hickson and this is a video update for the 27th of July 2015. As always, before we take a look at the markets, please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. This is the last video that I will be recording before I take a break over August and I will be coming back in September with the Hearst Trading Room. Whether I will be coming back with recorded videos or a live trading room, I'm not certain yet. I have been running a survey over the past week and thank you very much to all of you who have responded. Uh, if you haven't yet responded to that survey, I am keeping it open a little while longer. Uh, the results have been very interesting. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of interest in having live Hearst Trading Room sessions. However, um, there is a very uh, mixed response in terms of when we should do it. Here is the response to the day of the week that would be best. As you can see, there's a, a fairly even spread. At the moment, Tuesday is winning out slightly, um, a little bit ahead of Monday, but it's anybody's game at the moment in terms of the day of the week and uh, even worse than that is the time of day that would suit you. I would love to make all of you happy uh, but the chances of making all of you happy with a live trading room are looking a little slim at the moment. It's going to be impossible to make everybody happy and uh, in fact if I choose the most voted for time which at the moment is 10 a.m. Central European time that would only make 25% of you happy, uh, which is not really very good. Uh, so I'm going to have to spend some time thinking about how we're going to do this. Maybe a live trading room isn't the right solution, uh, but I'm going to certainly put my head around it and see if I can come up with a solution that will make as many of you happy as possible. If you haven't yet taken part in that survey and you would like to see the Hearst Trading Room happen live, uh, where you can ask questions, uh, even perhaps trade along uh, with me if we look at intraday trading. Uh, please make sure you go and fill out the Hearst Trading Room survey. There's the link to it, http colon forward slash forward slash 0s4, that's a zero, not a capital O, 0s4.com forward slash r forward slash in capitals h-t-l-i-v-e, h-t-live. Uh, so please go and fill in that survey if you haven't already done so. Let's take a look at the markets and we will start as always with the S&P 500. Now in last week's video I spoke about the concept of symmetry which surrounds every single trough and here of course is the trough of the 40 week cycle. At least it is most probably the trough of the 40 week cycle. It has only been a few weeks since that trough formed and there is a, a very small possibility that it's not a trough of the 40-week cycle, but in my opinion, it um, is a very convincing trough of the 40-week cycle. And surrounding any cycle trough, as I mentioned last week, and I wrote about it in the blog, you get a certain amount of symmetry in the price action. So um, here I'm drawing a, a, an extremely wobbly line to show you how that symmetry is played out. That doesn't, doesn't really explain anything. Um, perhaps the easiest thing to do is to count bars. And uh, you can see a strong move up uh, which reached a peak 14 days after the trough. And if we go back 14 days before the trough, uh, you will see similarly a peak at the same level. Okay, so there's the peak 14 days before the trough. Here's the peak 14 days after the trough. Um, there's not very much in it. Uh, a few points difference between the level of those peaks. Now, I spoke in last week's video about how we expect to see symmetry play out until it starts to break down. And uh, the direction in which it would likely break down will give us an indication of what the underlying trend is currently doing. I spoke in last week's video about how the underlying trend has definitely been bullish but we have started to see some bearish signs appearing and if the symmetry breaks down to the downside that would be an indication that underlying trend has turned downwards. It's an indication. It's by no means a hard and fast rule but it's a very useful uh, indication that the underlying trend has begun to turn bearish. Now up until Friday the symmetry was looking very good. 
Friday was 18 bars after the trough formed. And if we go back 18 bars, um, there we go. We end up on that bar over there. Um, let me include the weekend in that because, of course, we have no price action over the weekend. So we can't really see what's happening over the weekend. Uh, let me move all the way perhaps to Monday. There's 21 bars. And if we go back 21 bars, um, that's over there. So let's just compare the symmetry with the price moves. 21 bars before the trough. We were down at this level over here. That grid line is 2070. And uh, here on Monday, in uh, before hours trading, the US markets haven't opened yet. Uh, you can see price has come down to that level and it has dropped a little bit below it. Now that little drop below it is probably not significant, but it is a little bit worrying. Well, I shouldn't say worrying, but it 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 is a sign that this market is not able to maintain its symmetry. Okay, if it was to keep playing out a symmetrical move, then um, it would have found support at about the level of 2070, and we should uh, see, uh, you know, that sort of a, a move playing out. I'll try and draw it fairly symmetrically. We should see that kind of thing happening. Of of course, we might. We might still see exactly that happening, but. Uh, the fact that the 2070 level, which was a, a bit of a support level from uh, back here in June, the fact that that has been fairly clearly broken so far in before hours trading today is a sign that we're seeing more bearishness than we might have expected. So could it be that our underlying trend has begun to turn bearish? Uh, it's really too early to say yet. Uh, we're only looking at a few points discrepancy so far, and um, it's it's much too early to say. But I have to say that uh, the signs are beginning to appear that the markets are turning bearish. Uh, another sign that indicates that the markets have begun to turn bearish uh, has to do with the way in which price has interacted with this 20-day FLD. Now, what we expect, of course, is that price will come to the FLD, come down to the 20-day FLD, find support at the level of the FLD, and then bounce upwards. That's what we expect because this was an A category interaction. This is a B category interaction. Now, most B category interactions, uh, price finds support at the level of the FLD. When price fails to find support and drops down like this, that is a bearish sign. It's happened several times recently, and every time it happens, I say, well, that's a bearish sign, because yes, it is. A B category short trade is not a trade that I usually make. As I've mentioned before, and according to the rules of the FLD trading strategy, we don't usually make a short B category trade, unless, of course, the preceding 80-day cycle trough is a straddled trough. Now, we could debate that, and uh, let's just zoom out a little bit and ask ourselves whether that is, is really a straddled trough. A straddled trough in simple terms means that the trough is not nearly as, as prominent in, in terms of its drop down into the trough, not nearly as prominent as it should be given the magnitude of the trough. So here is a, a an 18 month cycle trough back in October. Look at the the fairly big move down and then the big bounce out. That shows you a a normal trough. In other words, it reflects the magnitude of the trough. Okay, the move down and then the bounce out. Now the move down into this 40 week cycle trough was not very impressive, but I'm not sure that it really qualifies as as a straddled trough. Uh, the actual definition of a straddled trough is, is a little bit hazy, a little bit vague. Uh, yes, you could say that's a straddled trough because it doesn't look very impressive in terms of it being a 40-week cycle trough. But, you know, we're, we're still getting fairly good uh, clear cycle shapes in here. Um, you know, here is the uh, the M shape for the 20-week cycle, and then here is the next one. Uh, that's a good, clean M-shaped cycle. It's n it's not a very obviously straddled trough. Um, you know, the cycles are still playing out uh, fairly clearly. What is very obvious from those two M-shapes that I have drawn is a decreasing bullishness. 
Can you see that? It's it's really obvious. Here we have a strongly bullish M shape, and here we have a, a very neutral shaped um, M shape cycle. And uh, as as I mentioned in last week's video, that is to be expected because, of course, this was the upside 20 week cycle, and this is the downside 20 week cycle. And so, of course, we expect um, this cycle over here to be less bullish than the previous one. So there aren't really um, any very, you know, sort of big surprises there. It doesn't really look like a straddle trough to me. So uh, I would not have entered into a short B category trade. Uh, perhaps it's a it's a missed opportunity that I will regret. Um, but I would I would rather miss opportunities than uh, than make losing trades personally. But uh, the important thing is that because prices dropped down below that 20-day FLD, uh, it indicates an increased bearishness in the market. Now, uh, of course, the next interaction that we expect is a C category interaction, and that usually gives us a good long trading opportunity. I'm worried about this bearishness that I'm seeing in this market, and I'm not going to take that C category long trading opportunity. That's my personal opinion. Um, uh, you know, I think it, it it might sort of flounder around a little bit. Uh, the, the next big trough that we're expecting is the 40-day cycle trough in the first week of August. I'm not expecting a tremendous bullishness in the meantime, so I wouldn't... Um, uh, be disappointed to miss that C category long trading opportunity. But uh, something else very interesting has been happening. Uh, I spoke a few weeks ago about the 40 week FLD and I've mentioned the 40 week FLD uh, a few times over the past over the past few months actually because the 40 week FLD is a, a very important one in my opinion in terms of uh, what's happening with the markets in the in the medium term uh, let me just zoom this chart out so that we can see uh, the significance of this 40 week fld i need to even go a little bit further out okay so uh, here is the 40 week fld uh, this green line over here and i wrote about this back in uh, was it march or, or or may perhaps when price came down to the 40 week fld and I pointed out that when price crossed down below the 40-week FLD, I would expect it to remain generally below that 40-week FLD all the way down to the 18-month cycle trough that I am expecting to occur early next year. Uh, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that price had crossed fairly strongly below the 40-week FLD, and I'll zoom in in a moment so we can see that. And... Um, it's no surprise that price bounced back up to the 40-week FLD. Whenever price crosses an FLD, one of the first things it usually does is it it bounces straight back to the FLD. The FLD is a very powerful line. Uh, but generally, I do expect over this time period, and by this time period, I mean the next um, nine months or so, the next 40-week cycle, I expect price action to generally remain below that 40-week FLD. And I said that in the video that I recorded uh, several weeks ago, and uh, I've said it several times. So isn't it interesting that the price move, and let me show the 20-day cycle FLD, that the price move that carried price out of the 40-week cycle trough over here, that price move came up to the level of the 40-week FLD. You can see here it broke below it. There's the actual interaction. It found support at the level of the FLD for uh, for four days, and then it broke below it, came clearly below the FLD, and then bounced back up to the 40-week FLD. And uh, isn't it interesting that as price came down to the 20-day FLD, where it was expected to find support, it came back down to the 40-week FLD, and look how it rode down that 40-week FLD throughout last week. Now, that's really not a big surprise. I've been saying for some time I expect price to remain below the 40-week FLD. FLDs are really meaningful levels for the market. 
And um, a really, really useful thing to do, in my opinion, is to is to have a look at um, at at all the FLDs that the that you can see on a chart, and and uh, you will identify uh, layers, uh, levels, where. Um, where the the market is is likely to pay attention, so uh, I've just uh, displayed all of them, and uh, uh, most of them are not really of much interest to us um, at the moment. But let me show you um, some FLDs that are really likely to be uh, fairly useful over the next uh, next period of time. Here's the 20-week FLD, which of which of course. Uh, we trade using the FLD trading strategy. Here's the 40-week FLD. If I can highlight it, there we go. That's the 40-week FLD. Notice how price has been riding down that 40-week FLD throughout last week and is continuing to do so today. Now, um, how long is it likely to continue riding down that 40-week FLD? Well, of course, I expect price to remain below that 40-week FLD until April next year. But uh, because it is such a long cycle FLD, I'm willing to give it quite a lot of leeway. And I wouldn't be at all surprised to see uh, a price come down to the 40-day FLD, which is over here, and find a little bit of support at that level. Perhaps even turn around and ride up the 40-day FLD a little bit, which will then place it above the 40-week FLD. But of course, eventually, I do expect it to resolve down below the 40-week FLD. So yes, we will probably see a bit of a bounce. We always do. Cycles move markets up and then down again. And they're constantly bouncing up and down. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see price perhaps latching onto that 40-day uh, FLD. There's the 40-day FLD. Wouldn't be at all surprised to uh, to see the market responding to that 40-day FLD. Uh, the 20-week FLD I've also highlighted because the 20-week FLD provides a, a great example of how you can use FLDs to uh, define important levels in the market. As uh, price started bouncing up a few weeks ago out of the 40-week cycle trough, the 20-week FLD, as you can see, provided a really, really great uh, sort of fairly dynamic level of resistance. It's dynamic because it's moving, it's changing each and every day, but price came up to the 20-week FLD and it pretty much tracked along that 20-week FLD for um, about half a week, four or five days, uh, before uh, before dropping away uh, down to the down to the downside. Finally, here's an interesting FLD, the FLD for the 18-month cycle, uh, which is again going to prove to be a very important level to the markets. Um, a very long cycle FLD will uh, often be um, broken a little bit by price. It's not necessarily very meaningful. But uh, this level here that I've just drawn over, the level of the 18-month uh, cycle FLD, is definitely going to be a level to watch. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the 40-day cycle trough form uh, you know, somewhere around about this level. I'm not looking for a, for a big drop down into into that cycle trough. I wouldn't be surprised to see the 18-month cycle FLD providing some support to the market. But now let's take a look at some of the other markets. The Dow Jones, for instance, uh, here is is a, a slightly more bearish picture than we saw in the S&P 500. Again, we can see the symmetry over here into the trough there's the symmetry look at that uh, level uh, price came back up almost to that level uh, so we still had very good symmetry at that point in the markets and then of course we expected the price to come down to balance uh, to to balance the action before the 40 week cycle trough and that is where the symmetry uh, broke down can you see that? Uh, Friday of last week and uh, so far in four hours trading today on Monday, the symmetry has definitely broken down to the downside. And if you take a look at last week's video, I'm not going to repeat all of it, but when the symmetry breaks down, it gives us an indication of what the underlying trend is doing. And the symmetry is breaking down uh, to the downside, indicating 
uh, that the underlying trend is probably turning bearish. If the underlying trend is turning bearish, what does that mean for the markets? It means that the markets are going to be uh, heading downwards uh, with more velocity, more pressure from longer cycles than they will be heading upwards. And so uh, for some time now, I've been speaking about the 18-month uh, cycle trough that I am expecting early next year. I'm just trying to zoom all the way back so that we can see it. Here's the same 18-month cycle trough in the Dow. There's the nest of lows. And uh, so if the underlying trend has turned bearish, then as we have seen uh, some good cycle moves um, going up on this side, we are likely to see some cycle moves bringing the markets down on this side. Okay, uh, so the bearish uh, short trades over the next nine months, in my opinion, are probably going to be the more profitable ones. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ quickly because the NASDAQ last week, uh, interestingly, was uh, breaking its symmetry to the upside. Here you can see we expected symmetry surrounding this 40-week cycle trough in the NASDAQ. And as I mentioned last week, price shot upwards, breaking its symmetry to the upside, indicating that the underlying trend in the NASDAQ is probably still bullish. But what has happened since then? Well, price has come back down to the 20-day FLD. It doesn't look as if though it has found any support at the level of the 20-day FLD, or it hasn't yet. It might still do, of course. Um, but so far, it looks as if though it's simply dropped down below the 20-day uh, FLD. And that's a B category interaction. And when price drops down below the 20-day FLD in a B category interaction, that is a bearish sign. As a matter of interest, if we count the bars, uh, we are 18 bars after the 40-week cycle trough in the NASDAQ. And if we go back 18 bars, you can see that's over here. And price uh, 18 bars ago was over there. Let me activate the pin. That's 16 bars, so 18 bars is, is over here. So price was at this level. 18 bars before the trough and it's at that level 18 bars after the trough so uh, we had a big burst upwards and, and the sy symmetry was completely destroyed to the upside but uh, now the Nasdaq has simply come back down and it is at exactly the same level it was at the same number of bars before the trough isn't that interesting so um, perhaps that uh, burst of bullishness was in fact uh, a short-lived, uh, perhaps even a, a false indication. Perhaps the underlying trend in the NASDAQ is not really that bullish after all. Perhaps that was just a brief burst of optimism in the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the DAX. Now the uh, DAX is is really quite interesting. And we have uh, two possible uh, an analyses that I discussed previously. Uh, the one possible analysis is that the trough that formed that I've been talking about as the trough of the 40-week cycle in the in the U.S. markets, that that trough was perhaps only a trough of 40-day magnitude in the DAX, uh, which of course means that the 40-week cycle trough still lies ahead of us in August in the DAX. Now, uh, usually when we're looking at a 40-week cycle trough that occurs in the U.S. markets and also the European markets, usually they tend to occur at roughly the same time or they might be about 40 days apart. Um, so that's certainly possible that we're still seeing the 40-week cycle trough lying ahead in the European markets. I really think it's very unlikely that the trough that formed in the middle of July uh, was was not a trough of the 40-week cycle in the U.S. markets, but it's something worth considering in terms of the DAX. That is a, a, a fairly good analysis. It looks fairly balanced. Uh, we can take a look at uh, the other analysis in the DAX, which also works very well, which shows this trough as a trough of the 40-week cycle in the DAX as well. In my opinion, 
I favor the uh, principle of commonality and the, the idea that the 40-week cycle trough has formed in the European markets as it has formed in the U.S. markets. But it's a, it's a fairly balanced debate. And so I keep my eye on both of these analyses. I do think it's important. One of the problems with this analysis, of course, is this very, very small, uh, very insignificant 20-week cycle trough over here in early February in the DAX. So, um, as I mentioned, it's a very balanced debate. Uh, really, uh, it's possible that we're going to see a deeper trough form uh, here sometime in August, which, of course, with the benefit of hindsight, we will say was, in fact, the true... 40-week uh, cycle trough. As a matter of interest, uh, how do we trade that uncertainty whenever I mention uncertainty in analysis? I know many people are thinking, oh, well, wh what does that mean? What do, um, how do we trade it? Well, um, uh, personally, what I will be doing is watching the DAX coming down into this trough uh, in, in early August, and if this analysis turns out to be the true one, then uh, we will have a good long uh, trading opportunity which will of course be an E category trading opportunity for the bounce out of the 40 week cycle trough and uh, if this analysis turns out to be the uh, the correct one then uh, we will also have a, a good long trading opportunity because here price is going to be bouncing out of a 40 week cycle trough and that will be an A category trading opportunity so even when there is analysis uncertainty uh, very often you can make the same trading decision so um, uh, certainly I'm not particularly interested in taking a C category trading opportunity uh, this is looking a bit bearish to me if that is the B category interaction, then this is looking bearish. I'm not interested in a C category uh, trading opportunity. If we get a D category trading opportunity for the move down uh, into the into the trough, then I would uh, certainly consider taking that. And then, of course, the uh, long bounce out of the trough, which might be a 40-week cycle trough or a 40-day cycle trough. Uh, time will tell. Let's take a look at the euro to US dollar. And uh, now an interesting thing has happened in the euro. Uh, here is the analysis that I favor. And here is the circle and whiskers of the 20-week cycle trough. I spoke about the 20-week cycle trough, uh, which is expected really in the first week of August because that's where the nest of lows is for the 20-week cycle trough, the first week of August. But look at the circle and whiskers for the 20-week cycle trough. It was expecting a trough um, about 10 days ago. So the 20-week cycle trough itself was actually expected to form about about 10 days ago. And uh, let's count the number of bars that elapsed. Uh, last week, Monday, 129 days uh, had elapsed, 129 bars, since the uh, very prominent trough in March. And now the average length of a 20-week cycle is 136 days. So uh, last week, Monday, we were only seven days early for the formation of a 20-week cycle trough. Now, as I mentioned in, in last week's video, uh, I expected price to uh, come up to the FLD uh, find resistance in a probable G category interaction, after which we would have expected price to drop down into an H category uh, interaction f uh, before it formed the 20-week cycle trough. However, as you should know if you are trading using the FLD trading strategy, whenever you're considering a G category uh, interaction, you have to ask yourself, is it possible that this will turn into an A category interaction? And what are the factors that you take into account when you ask yourself, is it possible that this could be an A category uh, interaction? Well, one of the first things you do is you count the number of bars um, since the, the previous 20-week cycle trough or the previous 80-day cycle trough. And uh, using the number of bars, you say, what are the chances that this could be the expected 20-week cycle trough occurring a little bit early? Well, in fact, the chances were quite good because with 129 bars, as I've mentioned, that's only seven bars early. Seven bars or a week early out of 20 weeks is not really very early. Uh, it's only about a 5% a, a discrepancy, uh, give or take. And 
uh, so we certainly uh, did need to stand by to enter into a long trade. As I mentioned in last week's video, I was not uh, interested in jumping into the long trade. And look at how price came up to the FLD. Uh, almost touched it, but not quite on Thursday. And then came down on Friday. Very interesting situation. Again, revealing the power of the FLD. That line has some meaning to the markets. Now, of course, looking at it, uh, last week that looked as if though the G category interaction was playing out but we had to keep in the back of our minds that that uh, might have turned into an A category interaction and certainly so far today on on Monday it looks very much as if though the 20 week cycle trough has formed over here and that was indeed an A category interaction. Now, how could we have traded that? Well, very simply, before price started interacting with the level of the FLD, the high on Thursday was a, a very useful level to use for a potential entry into the A category long trade. But now there is an alternate analysis in the euro to US dollar, which I've also been keeping an eye on. It's the analysis that you are seeing in Hearst Signals. And it's an interesting analysis, uh, also a very valid analysis. Uh, this analysis also places the 80-day cycle trough over here at the end of May. And instead of placing the 40-day cycle trough over here, because the market just kept sliding downwards, it is saying that this cycle trough that, uh, put, that formed last week on uh, Monday was in fact the trough of the 40-day cycle. So now what does that mean? That means that the next trade that we're going to be making when price interacts with the FLD is in fact the E category long trade. So um, looking at both of these analyses, do you see how in fact even though there is a discrepancy between the analyses, we're looking at slightly different analyses, in fact uh, we're considering exactly the same trading opportunity. Yes, an A category trading opportunity is different to an E category trading opportunity, but in principle it is uh, a very similar trade because it is also a long trade. And the level at which we would have entered into this um, E category long trade uh, also, of course, would have been the level of the FLD. Now, uh, as I showed you on the uh, previous chart, Price came right up to the level of the FLD, almost touched it on Thursday, but not quite, and then seemed to sort of um, stay below it. It rebounded from that FLD, stayed below it on the Friday, and um, gave us the E category long entry opportunity uh, today at the level of Thursday's high. Uh, a difficult trade to get into because of course uh, we have to be careful about uh, entering into trades on Mondays. Mondays are often very volatile days and they have been particularly so in the Euro recently. However the Monday trading guidelines do not say do not trade on a Monday. They do say be cautious about entering into a trade on a Monday. And one of the levels at which you could with some confidence enter into a trade on a Monday is at the level of the previous week's high. Perhaps give yourself a little bit of extra space because it is a Monday, but um, you know when uh, when price leaves the previous week's range, that is usually fairly meaningful and is not usually the result of uh, volatility on a Monday. Now let's quickly take a look at gold. Uh, gold has been uh, quite interesting. It entered into a downward slide and it um, uh, has really sort of um, shown its bearishness. Uh, let's speak about uh, this analysis just for a moment. Here is the most recent trough of the 18-month cycle, which was in November of last year. Uh, let's look at our first 20-week cycle. Let's look at the cycle shape. Was that a bullish cycle shape? Yes, it was bullish because it ended higher than it started, but not very much. What about um, the peak? Was it a late peak, which makes it a bullish cycle shape? Well, it was a, a slightly late peak. Yes, that's about halfway through the cycle there. It occurred after the halfway mark. It is a slightly bullish cycle shape. Not very bullish, though, I must say. 
And um, so what do we expect or what did we expect for the next 20-week cycle? Well, I've al already spoken about this um, in, in this video. The first uh, cycle in any pair is, of course, the upwards cycle. And then the next cycle is the downwards cycle. And we always expect the second cycle um, uh, within the, the cycle one degree longer. We always expect the second sub-cycle to be less bullish than the first one or more bearish. And indeed, we have seen a, a more bearish cycle and it has recently turned really quite nastily bearish. This first 80-day uh, cycle over here was was slightly bullish. It was um, uh, not not very bullish at all, but um, it did manage to maintain a slightly bullish shape. But uh, this most recent 80-day cycle has just simply collapsed to the downside. Uh, not really a very big surprise because um, because it is the downward. Uh, s cycle, uh, the 20 week cycle, but uh, we're uh, seeing an interesting trading opportunity shaping up right now and that is of course that as price bounces out of the 40 week cycle trough which is expected in gold as you can see to occur perhaps in about the second week of August, perhaps the first week of August, it might even occur now. Uh, so as price bounces out of that 40-week cycle trough, I would be interested in going long gold because we're seeing some good, fairly clean cycles. And uh, when price bounces out of that 40-week cycle trough, I would be interested in going long. I'm not going to jump at the trade because we've had so much bearishness in this market recently. And the uh, identification of the interactions between price and the FLD has been uh, very difficult to establish. Uh, here is the A category interaction as price crossed up above the FLD over there. Uh, actually did achieve its target despite everything. Uh, here is the B category interaction. Notice the B category interaction dropping down below the FLD, um, tracking along it sort of on the downside, not tracking along it, but running parallel to it on the downside. Very bearish sign. Um, this was uh, possibly the uh, C category interaction as price pulled back to the FLD. But you see how everything switched into bearish mode. Everything's happening below the FLD rather than rather than above it. And here is the D category interaction as price dropped down from the FLD into the 40 day cycle trough. The E category interaction uh, didn't really even occur. It, it was simply price reaching up towards the FLD which is a genuine interaction. Remember, price does not have to cross the FLD in order for it to qualify as an interaction. Price reaching towards the FLD is also a way in which price does sometimes interact with uh, with the FLD. Usually it's something that happens when you have a fairly strong uh, uh, pressure, either downwards or upwards, from the longer cycles, which of course we certainly did here because price was coming down into a 40-week cycle trough. Uh, the F category interaction was over here as price broke down away from the FLD to the downside. Now, are we going to see a G category interaction with price coming up towards the FLD followed by an H category interaction? I think we uh, uh, probably are, yes. Uh, and then we will get our A category long interaction opportunity for a long trade. Uh, but remember what I mentioned earlier, whenever we consider a G category interaction occurring next, we have to ask ourselves, is it possible that this could be an A category uh, interaction that's going to occur next? Yes, it is possible. And we can count some bars and we can look at some of the evidence. The first piece of evidence that's uh, worth pointing out is, uh, are these circle and whiskers for the 20 week cycle trough, which as you can see was on last week Friday. The, the circle for the 40-week cycle trough was on Sunday. So, uh, you know, this is the optimum time for the 20-week cycle trough and the 40-week cycle trough to actually form. However, the 80-day and shorter cycles are forming a nest of, low, nest of lows all the way over here in the second week of August. We're seeing a, a slightly ambiguous picture and um, let's just zoom back out again and let's start uh, counting some bars. Uh, how many bars have there been 
until today. Uh, there have been 262 days since the 18-month cycle trough at the end of November. Now, 274 days is the average length of a 40-week cycle. So we're expecting about another 12 days. Makes sense, about another, about another two weeks before the 40-week cycle trough w should form. But we should be standing by already in case it does form now, definitely. Uh, let's measure the number of bars from the most recent 20-week cycle trough and that has been 133 bars to today 132 bars the average length of a 20-week cycle is 136 bars 136 days and so the 20-week cycle trough is expected to form in only about four days time uh, so we should definitely stand by for the long trading opportunity in gold thank you very much for joining me in the Hearst trading room today I look forward very much to joining you again after my August break. And just a reminder, if you haven't yet filled in the survey about me doing these Hearst Trading Room videos live, as live trading rooms or live webinars, please go and fill in that survey and let me know what you think. I look forward to coming up with a solution that makes as many of you happy as I possibly can. In the meantime, I wish you profitable trading and look forward to seeing you soon.